Curtis Samuel highlights recent Bills free agent additions this week on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your host, Justin Goddard. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the Buffalo fan base podcast network. My name is Justin. I am your host today. And we have some free agency news to talk about. And um, before we kind of get into the moves that have happened this week for the Buffalo Bills, um, just kind of want to start it out with the disclaimer of, you know, some of these moves that we've seen so far aren't the sexiest moves. Um, you know, we see some of these names pop up in free agency and and we want all these dudes and we're kind of in the part of the Bills life cycle where contracts that we've given out, uh, whether good or bad, um, a lot of the draft develop and resign. sign um, It's taking up a ton of our cap. And this seems to be a year where Bean is kind of taking some medicine. Um, there's still money out there if if he really wanted to go chase down somebody, you know, we could still, the easy one, we could still restructure uh, Stefan Diggs and kick some more of that money down the road. Um, I think this is the year that Bean is kind of letting some of the dust, dust settle. Um, so we're not kind of going to be in this purgatory uh, for like the next five years of just continuing to push stuff down the road. Um, so kind of going into this off season, you know, being said himself, like, you know, don't, don't be looking for a huge splash. Um, and we all inherently ignore that because, <laughs> because he did tell us that a couple of years ago and went out and got Von Miller. Um, so is the salary cap made up? No, it's very real, but there's, there's ways to manipulate it. And Bean's been great with that. Um, so theoretically, um, could, could, you know, that digs restructure happen and we, we do go big, you know, big game hunting. Um, sure. It's a possibility. And I think we kind of saw that there was, um, actually a report that the bills had signed to Eric Armstead. Um, it was kind of like conflicting reports. I believe it was, uh, Ian Rappaport and Diana Rossini, like both tweeting that he was agreeing to terms with different teams at the same time. Um, but he goes to Jacksonville and it's, you know, in the twenties, in the 20 million range. Um, so th that's definitely a move that we would have to, you know, finagle the cap for. Um, but allegedly, you know, up until the 11th hour Bean was in on that, on that deal. Um, so maybe there's a surprise throughout this free agency at some point. Um, but like I said, we did go into this off season kind of preparing for, or, you know, some, some of the value contracts that we see being due. Um, now if we get, you know, through this wave of free agency, um, through the draft and there's still, you know, a spot sticking out on the board, I, I think Bean has put himself in a position to be able to, move some things around and make make a big move like that if need be um not even factoring in yet um Tredavious White's um post June 1st designation that's going to free up another 10 million dollars at that point um to go shopping with um so before I get to the new additions on the team I want to start with some of our own players that we've retained and I think it's super important to not just gloss over some of these moves um, because they're some of these players were like such big contributors um, they were you know kind of niche contributors that did a great job um, but when we're talking about like did the Bills go out and make these big moves well kind of in, in some regards right you know it doesn't feel the same as getting you know, a sexy new name on the team. Um, but keeping some of these guys around and 
maintaining that floor of what we were in previous seasons, I think it's so easy to overlook. But when you're talking about, you know, on defense, we've had a top five range defense for several years. Um, players that were contributing on that defense are good to have back. Um, even when when you look at the offense, I mean, there's a certain point of not maintaining just status quo because it that team hasn't gotten it done in the last couple of years. Um, but I think we've seen Bean do that this year, and he's made tough decisions on letting some of these veterans go that were hugely important to this team when I'm looking at, you know, Trey White, Jordan Poyer. Um, so I, I think there's kind of that balance of how much do we want to maintain the same that didn't get it done um, versus, you know, there's some luck involved in football. You have to get the right bounces. You have to have the right injury health. Um, so I, I think thus far, um, pretty satisfied with, with this balance that Bean has going on. Um, so I'll start it off with player that was probably top on my list of Bills free agents to bring back was Daquan Jones. And we saw that get done and absolutely thrilled by this move. Um, he is a player that's a little bit older. But, I mean, he he wasn't playing last year like he was showing age. Even when he came back from that pec injury, he didn't look fully like himself. uh, But he was still making an impact. The defensive tackle position tends to age pretty well in the NFL. Um, Super excited to have Daquan Jones back. Playing next to Ed Oliver. Hopefully we can keep Bernard and Milano healthy throughout the season and... That, that's a whole great combination of players right there. Um, defensive tackle slash defensive end. I know if you listen to this show, um, you know, the wide receiver, the skill positions, those are, you know, the sexy ones to talk about around draft time. Um, Brandon Bean loves to build through the trenches. He's always investing there. And even with Daquan Jones back, I'm still not surprised if we go defensive tackle in the first round. There's still only like three players under contract. Um, So we'll see what happens between now and the draft and, you know, kind of where the market is shaking out on who Bean thinks he can add. Um, If your team, you know, wide receiver round one, no matter what, a couple of these signings, re-signings that the Bills had, that they're only helping your chances. Um, We also saw them bring back A.J. Epinesa, which... Again, if you've listened to the show, he's a player that I wanted back. Um, I was really concerned that he was going to kind of price his price himself out of Buffalo. You know, a team that saw what he was able to do with, you know, limited snaps. I mean, like, hey, this guy can be our number one, number two. We can give him a bunch of snaps, and we're just going to keep that trajectory going. Um, I don't think he's, you know, this absolute game-wrecking defensive end, Um, but we didn't pay him to be that. Um, On a defense that rotates, you know, the defensive line a ton, um, I think he was super impactful at times last season. Um, I think year over year, we've only seen Epinesa get better, and, you know, he's one of these dudes that came in, you know, throughout the COVID weird circumstances. They had him drop a bunch of weight. They had him add weight. Um, and just kind of if he can maintain where he was at last year, maybe improve upon that a little bit. Um, that's a valuable piece on the defense right there. Um, we also saw Deion Dawkins get an extension. Um, the way he went about it was very (laughs) hurtful for my, uh, emotions, my heart. You know, he, he had some, some posts about, you know, Buffalo always being home and then, you know, had a follow-up post that was like basically hinting at, you know, he he was going to be getting cut, and you know, very quickly after they announced the contract extension, um, for me, I didn't only dislike like that whole sequence because I think he's, you know, a top ten range tackle in the league, 
Uh, I think he looked great last year with McGovern next to him. And I think a big part of what was holding him back from looking like the player that we thought he was um, was kind of that revolving door of mediocrity at the left guard position. I like that. I like that phrase, the revolving door of mediocrity. Um, So I thought he looked great last year, but even more so than that, like the financial implications of if he were to have been cut, like made absolutely no sense. So like it was in my head, like it, it had like no cap savings for us. Um, We just created a whole left tackle. Like what, what is happening right now? Um, So love the snowman, super excited that he's back. Uh, He's a clown. (laughs) <laughs> didn't appreciate the way he did it, but in hindsight, a couple of years from now, I'll, I'll be, remember that time Dawkins did that? It was hilarious. Uh, in the moment, did not enjoy it. Um, the Bills also brought back Ty Johnson. Um, again, a player that I wanted back, and I don't think this is, you know, some sort of elite signing that's going to, you know, set the NFL world to buzz, but... <clears throat> I thought Ty Johnson was great almost every time he touched the ball last year. Um, Just kind of a very different skill set from James Cook. Uh, He's just getting downhill and he's going. And he had impacts in the passing game. He had great impacts in the running game on very limited touches. And, you know, this is a guy that, you know, we saw the Bills add playoff Lenny later in the season and everybody wanted to see Lenny everybody you know Ty Johnson came in and he he made it you know kind of a moot point that the Bills ever added Fournette um, because he was doing all the things that he wanted we wanted Fournette to do Um, and it was kind of Fournette was here and then he kind of just disappeared Ty Johnson took his opportunity and ran with it um I think we still need to add a little bit in the running back room. Um, but this is just the Brandon Bean time of the year. He's filling the holes uh, on the depth chart, giving himself the positional, you know, uh, versatility to go wherever he wants to in the draft. Um, and then the last guy I'll talk about is Cam Lewis. Again, not a, not a player that, you know, is – some $15, $20 million guy that you get super stoked for. You've loved him on other teams your whole life, and he's finally a Bill. Um, but I think Cam Lewis also kind of maintains that floor, and I guess it's kind of hard to say maintains the floor in the safety room because Hoyer's definitely gone. I'm not going to count on Micah Hyde being back. There's been really no whisperings of him being interested or the team being interested. Maybe I'm wrong there and they're kind of just waiting it out and seeing what happens. Um, But you're kind of resetting the room. So I I think to me, this kind of like resets, the maintains the floor of the depth at the position. Um, And we saw, we've seen Cam Lewis do all kinds of different roles. And is he always, you know, great? No. Um, but he contributes on special teams. We've seen him play um, cornerback. We've seen him play in the slot. We've seen him play safety. Um, we've seen him kind of come down in the box and play like that dime linebacker type role. Um, I think just the versatility that he brings to the table, um, the fact that he's been in the building, he knows the system, he's been around for a long time. Um, doesn't cost you a ton of money. I've seen some people, you know, we're jumping right to, well, our starting safeties are Cam Lewis and uh, Taylor Taylor Rapp. And honestly, with the money that both of them got, it's not really crazy money for, like, just straight away assuming they're starting. Um, it's kind of like on the higher side of backup money. Uh, when you break it down, and I I guess it's kind of like low-end starter money when you see some of these, um, you know, top-end top end free agent safeties are signing for like $6 million average annual value. Um, I'm not convinced Bean is done here. And, I mean, when you're talking about these top safeties going for like $6 million, like, 
I, I'm not ruling out that we still add two more safeties, you know, whether one's through the draft or they're both through free agency, whatever. Um, hey, Bean, great day, great day to go uh, announce the signing of Justin Simmons. That'd be great. Um, but, yeah, I've talked about this previously, that, that about the safety position kind of being a devalued spot in the NFL uh, when we see so much of this soft zone cover two, um, the safety's job is kind of just to keep everything in front of them, trigger downhill. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not convinced that bringing back Rep and Cam Lewis is is this you know just sign that that's it that we're done at safety. Um, we're in March. The roster doesn't have to be set till late August, early September. Um, when you look through the list of available free agents, specifically at the safety spot, there's, I, I don't know, 10, 15 guys that I would be excited if they announced they signed. Um, there's still like 25 guys out there that were starters for a team last year. Um, so I'm not worried about that spot. I think at the very least, you have some valuable depth in Lewis and Rep. I do think Rep gets a chance to start. Um, but the floor is maintained from what your depth was last year. We'll see what happens throughout the rest of free agency and the draft. Um, do want to talk about some of the outside hires for the Bills. Um, so we're going to talk about that after the break. Make sure you stick around. Hey, this is Bill's Vader. Now back to the show. Welcome back in and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. Um, as always, if you've made it thus far, I do ask that you like, share, subscribe, tell a friend about the show. Um, free agency is pretty crazy. We're trying to come out every week on Wednesdays um, as the news happens and I can find some time. Might do some, you know, kind of breaking episodes um, if there's any big signings, anything like that. Um, so make sure you're subscribed. You don't miss anything. Uh, do want to talk on this side of the break about some of the outside hires for the Bills. And again, this isn't this isn't the splashiest, sexiest list, um, but it's players that I'm getting myself pretty excited for. Uh, and I want to start out with. Nicholas Moreau, um, linebacker that came over from the Eagles. Um, this is this is your depth linebacker player, right? Um, we see Dodson go sign a pretty decent contract. Um, I just feel like Moreau, I've talked to a friend who's an Eagles fan. Um, he said, you know... It, Sounded very similar to describing um, Dodson, if you would have asked me before last year. Um, said he gets lost in coverage. He's good at getting downhill. Um, and he'll play some special teams. So you kind of replace a one one for one with Dodson. And honestly, I was sitting here this time last year panicking about the linebacker spot. We hadn't done anything. Um there was you know is Bernard gonna start is it gonna be Dodson obviously we see injuries happen and Dodson ends ends up being a starter for a good portion of the season anyways and honestly granted we had to make some adjustments to the defense to kind of come cover up for you know some of what he was lacking um but I think Dodson overall gave us serviceable play last year and when you're looking at a, a you know a, a depth linebacker, I'm not really all that concerned about it. And he's a name that inspires some confidence in me if we do have to go to a backup. And my kind of caveat with all this is what our coaching staff has been able to do. Um, at the position. In particular, Bobby Babich has been great at coaching up the linebackers. Um, we saw Edmonds have his best year as a Bill um, the year Babich took over coaching the linebackers. Um, as I just mentioned, 
ton of concern about what we were doing at the middle linebacker position last year. Um, Bernard comes in and looks like an absolute stud. Um, we still have Dorian Williams in the building, and you know he looked a bit lost at times last year. Um, this is another guy that was, you know, a third round linebacker that nobody could understand why we drafted him. Sound familiar? Um, so hopefully, you know, behind the scenes they're coaching up Dorian Williams, and if he has to come into the game, we see the same kind of level of performance that we saw and most of us weren't expecting from Bernard. Um, so I trust the coaching there. Um, depth piece didn't cost you a ton. Um, th- these are the types of moves where people are like beans, not doing anything. Um, these moves matter. And we saw how much our defensive depth was tested last year. And for how many injuries we had on the defense, for the season that we ended up with at the end of the year, the depth ended up performing pretty well. Um, so excited for Dodson to go get his money. Um, I'm good with Murrow as, as a replacement for him. Um, don't think we had to do anything super meaningful at linebacker because the pair that we have, when healthy, should be just about top three to five range in the NFL. Um, next, we had the addition of wide receiver Matt Collins. And the initial response I saw to this was, you know, very, very lackluster. Nobody super excited about this. And it, it seems like one that had to age on people a little bit. And I think in in off season where a ton of us want the Bills going wide receiver round one, uh, at the very least round two, Kind of anybody who's not a real needle mover brought in at the receiver position um, just kind of takes away from the numbers game and the urgency of receiver being in need. Um, Because quite honestly, with the next player we talk about, the Bills could go into the next next season with this receiving core and, and you factor in Kincaid, you factor in some running backs, toss, toss, knocks in there. And this unit could be good to go. Um, do I want to see the Bills draft a wide receiver? Absolutely. Um, and I don't think Matt Collins factors into one of your top weapons. Um, I think this is your your Sherfield replacement. And Sherfield was a guy that I was super excited about this time of year last year. And just kind of ended up being an overall disappointment. Um, had some moments, but also had pretty unsure hands and when you're getting the limited rep count that you're getting, um, you have to make the most of those opportunities. Um, if you throw on a Matt Collins highlight reel, he's got some circus catches in there. Um, big bodied receiver with some speed. He'll play some special teams. And like I said, this, this isn't your wide receiver two replacement. Um, this is competition on the tail end of the receiving depth chart. Um, your wide receiver five competing with Justin Shorter. Um, and for for that context in mind, I'm I'm good with the signing. Um, Sherfield the last year was admittedly somebody that I had seen more of because I focus a lot more on our division than the Atlanta Falcons. And honestly, that division, the Falcons themselves, it was some of the most boring football out there. Um, I try to watch as much football as I can, um, at least on, you know, the NFL Plus rewatch, um, just to have knowledge across the league. That that whole division, including the Falcons, was pretty far down my priority list every week as I'm rewatching games. Um, it, just such boring, terrible football. Um, but as I, you know, kind of familiarize myself with Hollins more, um, I can see, I can see the value at, you know, wide receiver five position. Um, then rounding out the moves, this one saved for last kind of the, the highlight of free agency so far, um, the bills bringing in Curtis Samuel. And this is, this is another one that I feel like wasn't 
received well by I don't want to say like a ton of people. I'd say I've seen about like a 50 50 split on on like the reactions to it. Um, for me, I'm excited about the move. I think he brings a speed and playmaking uh, dynamic to the team that it's, it's a little bit more proven um, than we've seen with like an Isaiah McKenzie or Deontay Hardy. Um, more of like a true receiver than just like a gadgety guy. Um, what I think is interesting here is he's another guy that's not like a true boundary receiver. Um, he did a lot of his work in the slot. So like, what does that mean with Shakir? Um, what does that mean for, for like that boundary guy? And I think that in mind gets me to the point where I do still think the bills are going to invest in receiver in the draft. I have never thought that it was going to be a round one draft pick. So if it ever was, I was going to be surprised if it was a round one receiver after we added, you know, like pretty, a pretty solid number two in Samuel, um, have seen Shakir's development add you know, a talent, tail end of the depth chart guy in Hollins. Um, I'd be very surprised um, if it was a first round pick unless somebody was really standing out on the board. Um, I think this move of adding Samuel is a move that doesn't leave a, a glaring wide receiver to need going into the draft. Um, like we saw the year we drafted Elam. Um where we just kind of didn't have an answer at TV two. Um, I think it both establishes that floor that you don't have to force it in round one. Um, but it also isn't such a game changing, huge financial investment that it like precludes you from doing it. Um, I still think that this is a spot where you have Josh Allen you need to make sure that he's surrounded with weapons. And to me, that means investing in the receiver position almost every year. Um, If you take a guy this year and, you know, he busts whatever, um, you're talking, you probably got a year, maybe two left of digs. Um, Curtis Samuel came on a three-year deal. Uh, You're going to have to pay Shakir in the next couple of years that, this is something where you just got to keep restocking the cupboards to me um, and keep taking your swings at the plate and take one early, take one late, and just make sure that you always have talent around Josh Allen. And kind of my example for this is, again, the Elam year. Um, we were kind of forced to take cornerback round one. Everybody knew we were going there. Um, but you also swung on Benford in the sixth round. And... I'm still not all the way out on Elam. I still think he has a chance to to be a dude. But you took two swings at the plate and you got a stud in the sixth round in Benford. Um, so this, this is a year that I would be looking for the Bills to draft. Despite all this happening, I'd still be looking for them to draft a receiver in the first or second round. And then take another swing on a dude in the fourth, fifth, sixth round. Um, like I said keep making sure that cupboard's full. I don't think, you know, if you get to training camp and you got to make some tough decisions in the wide receiver room, that that's fine by me. But looking at the possibility of, you know, Diggs, Samuel, Shakir, a uh, drafted guy, Kincaid, Knox, Cook. I mean, there's just the possibility to have weapons all over the place. And I know there's only one football to go around. That's fine. Uh, we can we can find the snaps. We can find the reps. We can, you know, plan for injuries. You know, what if Stefan Diggs goes down for any meaningful amount of time? What if Curtis Samuel was brought in to be your planet number two receiver and God forbid he gets hurt week one, he's going to miss significant time. And then you're back to testing the depth. Um, like I said, this, we saw the team get some more ground game going with an improved offensive line with, you know, Cook really coming along. 
Um, and it's great. I'm glad to have, you know, more of an impact in the ground game. Um, that being said, you have a top two quarterback in the league. Um, I'm not going to say who, what order they are, but he's the top two quarterback in the league, in my opinion. And push comes to shove, you're going to win and win and lose games. You're going to go as far as Josh Allen takes you. Um, so yeah, it's important to invest on the defense and, you know, make sure you're maintaining a good defense. Um, which comes to shove, if a game comes down to it and you need to win a 40-point shootout, Josh Allen showing he's capable of doing that. Let's make sure that we have the weapons there. So super excited for Curtis Samuel. I think this is a low-key, really good signing. We've seen him be productive all throughout his career, and he had just just poop, just terrible quarterback play um, throughout his whole career. I mean, really, the best quarterback he played with was tail end of his career, Cam Newton. We saw some stinkers in there, Sam Howell, uh, Tyler Heineke, um, you know, some dudes that you've heard me talk about on this podcast is guys that I would love to back up Josh Allen. Um, so for being a player that's able to be productive with poor quarterback play, and then you're also talking you know, decent production last year with Sam Howell on a team that also had Jahan Dotson and Terry McLaurin on the roster. Um, he can get involved in the running game. He does the jet sweeps. He can be that chain mover for you, you know, with that short area quickness. Um, he's a player that gets separation. Um, all the things adding up of what I love in a receiver he is a little bit on the small side of 5'11", but I think, for me, I think the NFL is kind of shifting away from those, you know, giant, big-bodied receivers that win jump balls. I just don't think you you see that mo- as much. And we've seen Josh Allen's best production come from receivers that are able to separate and get some space. Um, we Guys like uh, Cole Beasley, Stefan Diggs. Um, we started seeing it with Shakir. Um, so that's that's what gets me excited for Curtis Samuel. Um, so just kind of multi-layered there. I think your worst case scenario, he's a viable number two option. Um, I think there's still some ceiling to reach into there. Um, going from, you know, bottom of the barrel quarterback play to one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Um, I think, like I said, it's an investment that could be a viable number two, but isn't such like a knockout number two. You know, we had to pay him $25 million a year and now we're handcuffed for the next five years. Um, And I think it still leaves the door open for um, an early significant investment and receiver in the draft. Um, But that's going to wrap it up on tonight's episode. Um, We are inching closer to the draft, so we'll we'll talk uh, more about that as we get closer. Um, And also, you know, still a ton of action to go in free agency. Just kind of take a look at the available free agents out there. There's still a ton of players that could make great contributions on this team. Um, So... Be patient. Don't get too high and low on this roller coaster ride that's free agency. You know, too concerned with what Bean has or hasn't done yet. Bean loves going bargain shopping. Uh, he's going to be hitting a thrift store like Macklemore. Um, just be patient. We're going to see some more moves. Um, and make sure you're subscribed so you're hearing us talk about them every week. Because um, I'd like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, check out the website, uh, website wanderingbuff.com. And tune in next week as we talk about more free agency and start working into the draft. As always, go Bills.